most of you are going to laugh at me and probably judge me for saying this, but I live in Florida, okay? And as if that isn't bad enough, 99% of the year it is extremely hot, it's humid, and it's just miserable outside. Even now, in December, it's like unpleasantly hot, and I do kinda dream about it being a little colder outside. That's where I know the judgment from you all comes in, because look, I've never lived in a cold place as an adult for like an extended period of time. I was born in Chicago, my family all lives there still, so like I've been there, I've been to cold, unpleasant places, but I've not like, you know, spent an entire winter through ones. So whatever, I'm a little Florida weak baby and I'm just gonna sit here and pretend that I want it to be cold when in reality I, I don't, I know. But all of this to say, I really, really was in the mood to build something wintry in The Sims. I'm coming to you from an 80 degree December day and trying to build something snowy. I actually really, really love the winter time in The Sims. I feel like I don't cherish this enough because looking at this lot right now and like seeing the snow on the ground and the snow on the roof and all those trees in the background, it's really beautiful over here. This one's a little 20 by 20 lot in Windenburg. I just bulldozed the original house that was here and built my own. In fact, I actually kind of tried to make this lot fit in pretty well in Windenburg. I tried to build like a more Tudor style house, but I did kind of take the decorations in a slightly different direction here. Like I think usually when I come in and try and build like wintry houses, I end up building like a Christmas house and I use a lot of like deep colors, a lot of reds and greens. I like put up Christmas decor and I didn't do that here. This is not meant to be like a holiday house or like a decorated house at all. It's just meant to be a house that is in the snow. It, it's a house in January, perhaps. We've passed the holidays. I did actually hang up lights. I had the Sims put up like some lights from the decor box, but I didn't put up like, you know, red and green Christmas lights. I had them hang up icicle lights. I just really liked the idea of this place being like very icy and, and kind of cold. And then on the inside, I really tried to be a little bit different from my usual wintry builds, especially in the color scheme like I mentioned. It's a lot of light colors in there. Like oftentimes when I'm building these wintry houses, I go for like a really dark wood floor and like wooden furniture. A lot of those like deeper colors I mentioned, but in this one I used like a lighter wood floor. We have white windows on the whole house. Like I really tried to, I don't know, have a bit of a brighter color scheme here. So it's still cozy, but it's not so like obviously wintry, I guess. And you know what? Can I just say, building in the winter is a lot harder than you might think. It's been a while since I last like intentionally built a winter house. I've been doing a little bit of renovating of my Sims houses in the winter where I like go in and I don't know, like add an addition on and like redo the kitchen or something in my Sims build when I get some more money. But I haven't like intentionally sought out to build in the winter in a long time. It's just like happened to be winter when I've built those houses. But you kind of forget that when there's snow everywhere, for example, I can't see the color of the roof. I don't remember if I painted it. <laughs> Maybe I like missed a spot and didn't realize because it's all white. You also can't see like the flooring I put down to mark the pathway to the front door. You can't tell if you're putting terrain paint down because it's covered by the snow. You also can't really tell how the landscaping looks because there's like winter versions of all of the plants. Versions that like obviously aren't flowering or maybe look a little bit more dead. So it's just really different like building a house specifically in the winter because I'm not really sure how it's gonna look when the snow melts. Don't worry, I did actually go back in and tested it. Like I went to Manage Worlds and came here in the summertime just to triple check that it all looked okay. And it does. The icicles are kind of weird in the summer, but the rest of it's fine. The landscaping is all very simple. So it, it totally works okay in the springtime and everything. It was weird though, because I kept wanting to put like stuff outside. Like usually in my Sims yards, I'll put like, I don't know, a pool or, or like even a table and a grill. And I still wanted to do stuff like that here. It just felt kind of silly. Cause like your Sims are not sitting out in that snow to be like reading a book or something. I did end up putting a little fire pit by the house, which I think is perfect. I did end up putting a little fire pit by the house, which is actually kind of perfect, but there isn't like a swing set or anything like that for the kids to play with. In fact, the house is actually quite small on the inside. It only has two bedrooms upstairs, so there's not really a lot of kids living here anyway. I love building these like sort of smaller, cozier houses for my Sims. I think it's so much fun, but I guess practically this is probably not the most playable house <laughs> given the fact that it's really expensive, kind of small, and also specifically designed to only look good in one season. Like I said, it's okay in the other seasons, but this one is really built for winter. <laughs> and she's not made to be in the fall, for example. I actually built this live on my Twitch channel the other day. And don't tune me out, okay? Because this might be a Twitch plug, but I've got good reason. Because the day that I'm posting this, I'm actually live on Twitch doing a charity stream. We're gonna be live all day playing Sims. I've got some plans for like a seven toddler challenge and a couple Sims builds. We're 
We're also at one point gonna do crowd control sims, and that's where when you donate, you can like spawn a fire or like add a sim into the house and it will add a sim to my household with your name. It is absolutely the most chaotic thing I have ever done. When I did it last time, it was a nightmare. As you can probably imagine, the game kind of like glitches out when it's got so many sims being added and so many things happening. So I would have like 30 sims in the household. Somebody would start a fire, someone would catch on fire, and then like all of the sims would refuse to put the fire out. And then they would like glitch and just be stuck standing there and they would all die. They would all die in the fire. I would have these like death waves where like 20 sims would all die in a fire to the point where like even the Grim Reaper would glitch out and he wouldn't reap them because there was too many. It was just a nightmare. So if you want to come by and hang out, I'm going to have my Twitch channel linked down below. At the time I'm posting this, I'm going to be like just going live. So hopefully I'll still be around when you catch the video. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's also a charity event. I'm going to be raising money for Able Gamers. They do some really, really cool things. Their whole mission is to make it possible for everyone to be able to play video games. So they're working to make games more accessible. They help provide disabled people with like really cool specialized controllers or like other assistive tech. Obviously, depending on your disability, you might have different needs. So think like controllers that work with foot pedals or an adaptive one that's got extra buttons on one side so you can play with just one hand. There really is like such a cool range of extremely impressive tech out there now. I'm gonna link some information on Able Gamers down below if you wanna go check out their stuff. You also might happen to know someone in real life who might benefit from them. Able Gamers means a lot to me and I really, really appreciate what they're doing. I mean, I think all of you can probably relate. Gaming has made such a positive influence on my life. I mean, it's literally changed my life. I met my husband because I play video games on Twitch, right? So having that escape, having like the social network that comes from playing video games is so important and it's so life-changing for so many people. It's really cool how Able Gamers is working to make that possible for everyone. So with that being said, I'm doing a charity stream for them today. Please, please don't feel like you have to donate, but if you do want to, I'm gonna have all that linked down below for you too, but you can also just come hang out with us. I mean, just hanging out in the stream and helping to like spread the word makes a huge difference. And I'm really not just saying that, I like really truly mean it. But anyway, we are making some serious progress on the furnishings of this build. This floor plan was kind of a weird one because for this style of house, I almost wanted it to be like a slightly more closed off floor plan. I feel like that kind of fits these older homes, but in practice, it just didn't really feel like it was big enough for that. It was kind of hard to, to fit in extra rooms. It just made more sense like walking space wise to have the whole place just be open. I also really, really tried to fit in a second bathroom. I always want to have a bathroom like on the first floor in houses like this, or at least have like some sort of guest bath or like a half bath that just has a toilet and a sink or something. But I only managed to fit one upstairs and that's fine. A house like this, a two bedroom house having only one bathroom is like totally fine, obviously. It's just nice in The Sims to be able to fit in like as many amenities as possible, you know? So I wanted to fit one down here. It just, it just didn't really work. So darn, I guess my poor two Sims will have to survive with just one toilet. But actually though, considering that this house is for like two or three Sims, they've got some nice space downstairs. Downstairs we have like kind of a kitchen nook. There's a beautiful little dining nook. We have a big living space in front of a fireplace. And there's like a little study nook downstairs. I managed to make it all pretty usable. I also kind of had this like light blue and light green color scheme going on. So I tried to warn you, the colors were a little bit different than what you might expect out of a wintry house. The kitchen especially is like kind of screaming spring, which is maybe okay. It's kind of fun to like try and make this like sort of obviously springy color scheme work for this like winter build. Green can definitely be like a wintry color, but it's more of like a forest green or like an emerald green and not so much this like little pastel green. This one is like, is pretty, pretty much definitely a spring color, but I made it work. It looks kind of cool. I also tried to use some of the holiday free pack decor, like those little trees and there's like some cute candles and stuff. Cause those things don't scream like actual holiday. They kind of work for just like general winter decorations. I feel like I also just tried to put a bunch of kitchen clutter in general. There's like a chicken. I've got like some pots and stuff everywhere. I feel like this shape of the kitchen is really quite cool though. I also put a shelf like above the window kind of in the middle there with like some cookies on it and stuff. I don't know. I just wanted to really feel like people actually lived here. I always try and aim for that, but I think especially after the clutter kit came out, I've been like really inspired to make my homes very cluttered. <laughs> it's like really spoken to me, I think. There's some kind of cute stuff you can do though. Like there's those little dirty mugs that came with the clutter kit. I kind of like hid them underneath the dish rack. I tried to put like plants and pots and stuff everywhere. Oh, and then on the outside of the house, I really, really wanted to have a fire pit. I just didn't know like 
what color scheme to go for. I kept trying to use one from that little camper's kit, and I think the fire pit itself is okay, but I really struggled with what seating to put. I was like, should I do benches? Should I do like a cushioned seat? But like, realistically, you probably wouldn't leave cushions out in the snow like that. Like maybe you would bring them out <laughs> and sit on them and then bring them back inside, but you wouldn't like leave cushions in the snow. And I don't think they would have like a log here. So I just, I kept going back and forth, like really struggling with what I should put on these. And then I wanted to put like some s'mores there, but it wasn't fitting. So this was kind of hard for me, the side yard. It also wasn't very big. I was trying to sneak in like a little bit of decor right there on the side of the house. And that was kind of the only place for it. And so it was tough to figure out, but I think in the end it looks cute and would also be kind of useful for something like this. Although fair warning, when you have fire pits in your Sims builds, your Sims are so prone to setting them on fire. It's almost like unbelievable. And this is me talking and I've got a fire toilet in my Sims house. But your Sims just like light this and then walk away and they'll just leave it there and then catch on fire. It's it's very dangerous. You need to be careful, especially with wants and fears now, because once they have a fear of fire, they're even more likely to set more fires and it just keeps happening. It's like an impossible spiral. So watch out if you've got a fire pit in your Sims build. I used to always worry about fireplaces and like having a fireplace next to a rug or like too close to a rug. But honestly, it's not even a problem anymore. It's the fire pits. I never have fireplace fires, but fire pits are so common. Also, I guess I should explain the fire toilet quickly. Basically, your Sims can upgrade the toilets to have this like compost container if you've got eco lifestyle. And when they have the compost container upgrade, they can spontaneously combust if you're not using the compost. Well, I first did that by accident, was so shocked by the toilet fire and thought it was so funny that now I've just kept it on purpose. I have this legacy challenge and I keep bringing my Sims and moving them to new houses and bringing the toilet with me. And we have like near daily toilet fires. It's actually kind of scary and kind of chaotic in a bad way, but it, it's a little fun. It's kind of killed like a couple of my Sims, but it's fine. It's it's exciting, you know? It, it's like a um, really uh, <laughs> riveting content, you know, when your Sim just like dies in a fire in their bathroom. Um, anyway, we're working on furnishing the living room space now. And this is where I was really struggling because I was working on this inside and I was like, this is not wintry. <laughs> this does not look wintry at all. So I was really trying to add in like, I don't know, some things that made it feel warmer, like more candles and stuff like that. And I do think it kind of works. I was trying to use a lot of like golds and like browns and, and brick sort of accents everywhere to, to kind of warm it up a little bit. I also kind of like that little platform by the front door. I had to do it. It's because I put a platform in the front to make it look like there was a bit of a step up there, but the whole house is not on a foundation. So I had to put it inside too, so it wouldn't look like it was just floating there. But I think it's kind of nice because I could put some brick and, and try and add some more like color and dimension to the space. I put like a tea set and some coffee mugs and stuff on this little coffee table here. I put like blankets and some of those fire tool clutter items. I really struggle with the rug color. I went back and forth a lot trying to decide what to use, but that's kind of a theme of this though, is me being like, like, I, I want this to be these colors, but I'm not sure if I like these colors. <laughs> I do think in the end it's okay, but I, I definitely was like, I don't know if this is really screaming winter to me, but I think that's that's the fun of it, right? I know I keep saying that, but I'm, I'm like really trying to justify it here. <laughs> I think next week I want to try and build like a more wintry cottage and, and maybe do like an in-between of this sort of style and the one that I did a couple days ago. I built a house a couple days ago that like really screamed Christmas. There was like garland everywhere. This one has no decorations. I want to do like a slight in-between, like a little cottage, very cozy, very winter, maybe has a Christmas tree, but it's not like red everywhere. I guess I should probably also do like a, a Florida Christmas kind of build. <laughs> maybe I'll do like a, a palm tree Christmas, because let's be real, that's what I've actually got. My Twitch chat was asking about that too. They were like, Kayla, can you do like a Australian Christmas for those of us that don't have cold Christmases? And I was like, guys, I live in Florida. <laughs> I, I know what it's like. I might not live in the Southern Hemisphere, but it, it is hot on Christmas where I live. I'm trying to like live vicariously through my Sims. I'm like trying to do the opposite. I don't want a palm tree Christmas. <laughs> I want a snowy Christmas and I'm just, I'm not gonna have it. We always used to go visit my grandparents every year for Christmas, but in the last couple years, well, this is gonna be sad. I'm, I'm okay, <laughs> but when my grandpa died, we stopped going up there. Usually my grandma is here now for Christmas. So it's just kind of weird. I'm like kind of in like a 
a weird, um, different phase of life where things are changing and like holiday traditions are different and changing. So maybe that's why I'm like so desperately dreaming of a white Christmas. And it's not like it snows in Chicago every year on Christmas, but it has before. At least there's a chance. It certainly is not gonna snow here on Christmas. <laughs> if it snowed in central Florida, that would actually be a disaster. Like a disaster. We are not prepared for that sort of thing. We are, we have no infrastructure for that sort of thing. <laughs> that would really, really be bad. Anyway, I'm trying to make this little study nook here in the corner. I realized that since I didn't put a TV in this house, it would be nice to have a computer. I usually try to have at least one of those in my Sims builds, just because it's so nice to like have your Sim play games to get their fun up or like just watch some TV or something. I guess the computer is probably a lot more practical because you can like, you know, write or program or whatever to also build skills and make money. But on this desk, I put a bunch of clutter, some from the new clutter kit. There's like the little sticky note thing. There's that little radio in the back corner so you can play music down here. I also put like a diary and stuff. And then in the bookshelves, I wanted to try and add some cute clutter like in the living space. And so I put these little snow globes on the bookshelf and I was like, oh, maybe the Sims like collect snow globes. <laughs> I was trying to tell a little story there with that one. You know what, watching this back, it's like actually amazing how much time I spent downstairs compared to upstairs. We've got like three minutes left of the speed build and I've not even started the upstairs yet. But I guess it makes sense because this took a lot more time to like figure out the floor plan and, and there's a lot of stuff I was trying to fit into a rather small space. Whereas the upstairs bedrooms were a little bit easier to figure out. They're not as like complicated to try and space out. I wasn't having to like delete walls upstairs to try and place fake things hanging on the mantle, you know? <laughs> it's a lot more complicated down here. Actually, speaking of placing things on the mantle, I really wanted to have a wreath. I didn't want to have like a Christmas wreath though. I just wanted to have a wreath. I thought it'd be kind of cute, but all of them are like very springy, very Christmassy or like too small. I tried to size up one of them and it is the one that has the blueberries on the bottom. And when you size it up, obviously it looks ridiculous because the blueberries are like this big <laughs> and you can't put that on the wall. It looks silly. Also, unsurprisingly, I have waited until the very end to paint the walls. That's sort of a tradition here. It's because I never find wallpaper that I like. So I always just like don't paint them <laughs> until the end because it stresses me out to try and choose. So I just don't choose and I wait and see. Also, this bedroom upstairs, can I just say, I think is perfect. This like purple and blue sort of vibe is very wintry to me in like the ways that I wanted the whole house to be. And it's all because of that super cute cats and dogs bed. That cats and dogs bed is so underrated. It's such a good bed. There's like so many cute quilt swatches. I feel like it worked out really, really well. And also I kind of furnished this room as though it was maybe like grandma's house and, and the kid is living here or has like come to stay. So there's a bunch of toys here. It makes me think of my grandma's house because she used to have this dollhouse that my grandpa made and like a little tiny play kitchen in the spare bedroom. She also had a giant teddy bear. Honestly, the thing was bigger than the ones in The Sims. Like these like teddy bears, Blarfy, that we have in The Sims, it was bigger than Blarfy in real life. Although I guess I was very young. So when I'm thinking about this, my like perception of scale is a little bit off because I was smaller. <laughs> but she had this giant bear that had a pink bow. And I remember I used to try and like throw it down the stairs. That sounds really bad too. But I used to like try and throw it down the stairs <laughs> and like watch how many times it would tumble. And so uh, this room and like the giant stuffed animal and the toys makes me think of my grandma's house. So I kind of picture this being like a grandma's house. Also the main bedroom, this primary bedroom was extremely hard for me to furnish because it's kind of an L shape, which made it tough to fit a bed that could like have a nightstand and still have space to walk around it. But I managed to fit a bed with the cute quilt. It's also got like a little dresser and I managed to fit in like a really adorable little like painting nook sort of area. So maybe, maybe grandma is a painter. That's how she makes her money. And her grandkid has come to stay over the winter time. Adorable. Honestly, living my dream. We've talked about this, but this is my dream. But anyway, the house is pretty much done here. I'm just putting up some last minute, like little finishing touches and last little bits of decor. And now that the house is finished, I kind of want to pop into the game for real and show you a little tour, kind of show you around the place. It's always kind of hard to follow when I'm like speeding around and turning the camera so much. So you can't really get the full picture until I open it in game and show you. So I built this one on this lot where the free spirits live in Windenburg. I just like bulldozed their house and built my own here. And look at how pretty it looks in the snow. Like this whole world, Windenburg 
Pittsburgh is so beautiful in the winter time. These trees are just amazing. I love this lot. Like, this is probably one of my favorite lots in the game, specifically in this season. But this is how the house looks. It's got kind of an interesting roof line here, and obviously I hung up these cute icicle lights everywhere. Around the side, I put like a big chimney and some little firewood and stuff. In the back, there's like a fake balcony and just like a trash can. And then back here in the actual side yard, I know you can't see, but there's a little bit of terrain paint that leads you to like a slightly paved area right here. So you can come out this back door and you can sit here by the fire pit and you can like roast your marshmallows and make hot chocolate and stuff. I also put some firewood right here. I don't know, I thought it was kind of a cute little side yard space. Oh no, hang on. This is when it gets too close to the roof line. It makes it look like it's not snowy. It just looks dead. Let me move that. I have to keep scooting it. It keeps like, whenever I load back into the lot, it changes. It's very weird. Oh, over here, I also put like a fake gate. This fake gate is from Cottage Living, but I kind of like snuck that into the door. I thought this looked kind of nice. And then when you actually walk inside, you step right in here through like a little entryway and I put like some bags and some coats and mail and stuff right by this front door. We've got a little blanket basket. I put the little desk nook. There's like a radiator and everything. Over here we have the main living space by the fireplace. I also hid a couple of these little pigs around. I don't know. It just, it was cute. I thought it was cute. <laughs> so we have this little living room area. I think it deleted some of my stuff. Hang on. I'm like, I know I have more decor placed on this. I know I had more clutter. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> I swear I had glasses there. Whatever. There's like a book and a coffee cup there on the table. Over here is the little dining room and I love how these chairs look with that rug. I think this with the cute gold accents and the gold light and stuff. I just, I really, really like the vibes over here. And there's the door to the outside right here. They've got a clock and another coat rack. And then back here is the little tiny kitchen nook, which I also think turned out really cute. I love the clutter in here with like the shelf and the window. There's like cookbooks and a little teapot on the stove. I don't know, it just, it feels like somebody's actually living and, and cooking in here. And then when you go upstairs, there's like a little tiny hallway, nothing too fancy. Through here, we've got access to the bathroom. I put a chicken on the wall. I don't know. It's not like a fancy bathroom. It's, it's just like a simple tiny one. Also, this bathroom is what has the fake balcony, by the way. <laughs> that is a nice bathroom. Anyway, over here is the kid's bedroom. I put some cute clutter around. They've got like a little diary right here. And there's a toy box. They also have this fish tank that has no fish in it and like a little pop-up book. This is the cute bed that kind of inspired the whole place. And then over here is that primary bedroom. I've got some cute clutter, like some jewelry and some glasses here. We've got that main bed. This was kind of the only place that fit the bed because I wanted to have enough space to have your Sims walk all the way around it. Technically Sims can scoot now, but I like having the bed off the wall so you can get in on both sides. And then over here in this corner, I put like a little painting nook and I also put another bookshelf and I hid some more snow globes in here. Like I mentioned, I wanted to pretend that this Sim collects snow globes. So <laughs> they've got like a Grim Reaper one. They have this cute one. This one's a Tudor house. So I picture it like maybe it's their house in the little snow globe. I don't know. I thought it was cute, but that's kind of the whole place. It's not huge on the inside, but I think it turned out really, really nice on the outside. I really, really love this house. This is like one of my favorites that I've built in a long time. All of the snow is just so pretty. Like it just looks so nice right there. Quickly, I want to show you it in the summertime though. It's actually not bad. I know I was kind of joking about it, but I think it actually looks okay when it's not snowing. It's definitely kind of jarring though, because it looks really different when there's not snow everywhere, but this kind of gives you a better idea of the landscaping and like how this little side part looks. But I feel like it actually even looks okay in this season. It's it's certainly not bad. It's just better with the snow, I think. But obviously like to do the terrain paint, I had to come into the summertime because you can't see it otherwise. It's covered in snow. It was kind of fun. But anyway, that's the finished house. It's on my gallery if you want to download it. I just called it Snowy Cottage. It's really a very clever name, obviously. But on that note, I'm gonna cut this video right here. Thank you, thank you for watching. Make sure you pop into my stream today if you want to. I'm gonna have that link down below for you. And with that being said, I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye, everybody. Last year, my cousin got married in Colorado in December and it was freezing. So I know I'm sat here being like, wow, I love the cold. I want a cold Christmas, but I know the truth and I know that it's miserable, okay? I'm sorry for being a silly little Florida girl, but I, I do realize how silly I sound.